Good evening, everyone. I hope everyone had a good day today. I mean, you know, when it comes to the good and the bad, you just want to make sure that you finish the day strong. So uh, my day was a little combination of both, but, you know, we're still here to still empower you on the Businesses Personal Series. Uh, for this is your first time joining. My name is Eric B. Horn. I am the founder of Eric B. Horn Career and Business Solutions. And what I've been doing for the past three weeks is uh, uh, enduring in a session called Business is Personal. And the gist of the series is even though they say you shouldn't mix business with personal, entrepreneurs go through uh, certain feelings that a lot of times they don't even talk about or they don't even show, right? They keep it bottled up inside because they want to make sure that they keep the business and the personal aspect separate. However, there are many trials and tribulations and many journeys that you go through as an entrepreneur that will affect your, your personal. Um, just to kind of go back based off of what we've talked about in the past two weeks, the first topic was, was failure. Uh, entrepreneurs fail. However, when it comes to showing that you're perfect and only showing your successes, you're really not being transparent, not only to yourself, but also to your, your tribe or your, 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 your clients or your, your customers. Everyone makes mistakes. Everyone fails. However, the key thing is, is to learn from those failures and create wins from them. So we went through three key points of things that you can do as an entrepreneur to be more vulnerable when it comes to your overall failures and how you can tie that back to your your bottom line. Once again, if anyone or any entrepreneur that that positions themselves as being perfect, nine times out of 10, they are the ones that are failing the most. And it takes too much time, effort, and energy to make it seem like you're perfect. Now that, um, that line can actually go into someone's personal life also, but you know, it's, it's okay that you, you fail because as long as you turn that failure into a learning experience, you are in a good position. Uh, last week, we talked about criticism. There are so many people that will try to criticize you and your business saying that you're too old to start a business, you're too young to run a business, you are a woman so you can't possibly know how to run a business. There's a lot of things that people say to criticize an entrepreneur and all of it is in a nutshell is BS. And you can be as young as you are, as old as you are, you can be a male, you can be a woman. It really doesn't matter. You're going to, if you start a business and if you are dedicated to it, you are going to be successful. But I also don't want to sugarcoat it. You're going to get people to, to, to criticize you very hard. And the more successful you become, the more criticism that you're going to get. There is no getting around that. That's why it's so important to surround yourself around um, good people that understand you. And when you go through your entrepreneurial journey, you will understand that that group is very, very small, right? Most people try to make everyone that they know that supportive person. And in actuality, it's not. You're going to, uh, and this is kind of indulges into what, what I want to talk about tonight, but you may even see receive criticism for the people that are closest to you, which is a big challenge within itself. So, you know, endure that criticism, take that pain, because if your business or the opportunity to start in a business or opportunity to become successful is a lot bigger than that criticism, you will make it through. So I just want to recap on the last two things that we talked about for the last two weeks. And this week is the the, 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 the meat of what I usually talk about in my biz therapy group sessions, because there's always one or two individuals that have a strong sense of entitlement when it comes to their business. And let me just put this disclaimer out there. Anyone that's viewing this, I may piss you off because of what I'm going to go through, I'll let you know, this is the same thing that someone pointed out to, to, to me with, with my business and my overall sense of entitlement. And to be honest with you, when I first heard it, I really didn't like it. But then I really had to take a deep look at myself and say, what's bigger? Me having this sense of entitlement that I'm going to 
you know, uh, go down the line on? Or is my business more important than that? And is the overall success of my business bigger than my entitlement, right? My entitlement was tied to my ego and I had to humble myself because I can have a huge sense of entitlement when it comes to my business, but, you know, without humbling myself and being realistic about some of the entitlements that were holding my business back, I really wouldn't be in the position that I'm in right now and where I'll be in the future because I still have to battle with, with some of these entitlements. So I just wanted to be open and, and honest with you guys. So instead of going back and forth, let's dive, dive right into it. The first entitlement that I see a lot of business owners have that they need to remove is thinking that your family and your friends are obligated to support your business. Let me say that again. I come across a lot of business owners who wholeheartedly feel that your family and your friends are obligated to support your business. In actuality, it's not. Now, it's a blessing if you have someone who's a family member or a close friend to support your business, but stop destroying some relationships that you have just based off of the fact that they won't support your business. It's your business. You need to take ownership of it and you need to get over the fact that if someone in your family or your immediate circle doesn't support your business, it's fine. They are your friends, but don't tie the fact that if they can't support you in your business, then that they are bad individuals. That was something I had to get over really quick when I first started my business, because I was more in my feelings than actually removing the personal aspect when it, when it comes to business. Because throughout my entrepreneurial journey, I've been blessed to have people support me and I appreciate them. But one of the key things that I had to learn, there have been more strangers that have supported my entrepreneurial endeavors than anything else. Let me say that again. There have been more strangers than actual friends or family members that have supported my entrepreneurial efforts. And that's okay because I had to get over myself. One of the things that you know, an entrepreneur told me, he puts the people in his life in categories. And I know that sounds very cold and very, uh, I mean, at the end of the day, some people may think it's wrong, but you have your friends for a certain reason. You have customers for a certain reason. You have family for, for, for a, a certain reason. There is no rule on this earth where all of these individuals need to be intertwined in your business. And that's okay. You know, if someone doesn't want to support your business, do you need to ask yourself, does this one person or these group of individuals is going to stop me from doing what I need to do? Now, I know there's going to be someone there that says, okay, what if my significant other or my spouse or, you know, my family doesn't support the business? And there's another issue that's going on there that you need to uh, give a deeper dive to because the business is just the surface layer. But there's another core issue why someone may not support your business. Um, maybe they don't know how to support your business. Are you specifically telling them, hey, to support my business, I need you to do X, Y, and Z. And also, let me bring a, a reality check to you guys. Of course, being an entrepreneur, the bottom line is, is making money. Of course, you want to have an impact. You want to have influence. But when it comes to your accountant, you want to make sure that you know you have more, in, you have more income coming in than, than coming out. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the people in your inner circle need to support you. It's their right if they don't want to, and you have to accept that. Now, moving forward, how you interact with this person, that's more on you. But if I know for a fact that there's been some friends that didn't want to support my business, I wouldn't even bring it up to them because I know it'll be a waste of my time, my effort, and my overall energy. Once again, I know what the reality of the situation is, so why would I even try to catch feelings based off of the fact that, that they won't support me. Once again, it, I had to learn this quick and understand that when it comes to my business and maybe individuals out there that are looking at this that can relate, when it comes to my business, more strangers support me and, I, and I'm grateful for them just as much as family members and friends, but I'm not in my feelings if someone doesn't want to support me. It is what it is because the time and effort that I used to spend on dwelling on the fact why this particular person doesn't want to support me is useless. I'm not going to get that time back. I'm not going to get 
that overall energy back. So why dwell on it? Once again, I had to go over that mountain to come to that understanding. So maybe it will be a process for you once you figure out that there are some certain people that may not support your business. But once again, it's yours. It's your name on the paperwork. It's your overall concept. It's your overall hustle. So you need to take responsibility of it and support yourself. Because nine times out of 10, if someone doesn't want to support right then and there, sometimes people are funny, right? And it comes to a situation where people, you have some people out there that they know you, but they won't support you until they see that you're being successful. It's weird, but once again, people are very, very funny, especially in this day and age. But instead of trying to court them or try to uh, stress yourself out on why your family members or your friends you know, support your business, keep it moving. That strong sense of entitlement, I've seen businesses destroy itself because they're so caught up in why this person won't support me. They won't support you, figure it out, and then move forward. Once again, it's hard. It's cold, hard math. But once again, I told you guys that some of the stuff that I may say may piss you off. But at the end of the day, if you keep moving in the right direction and uh, push and put forth the time and effort and energy, you are going to find individuals that will support you in your business because that's what you're looking for. Some family members will, some friends will, some family members and friends won't. It, it is what it is. But do not use that as a hang up to keep you from pushing forward with your overall business. Uh, number two, uh, another piece of entitlement, which I had to get over, um, I should be as successful as my competitors because they're either more visible than me, they're even making more money than me, whatever the case may be. But it got to a point where early in my entrepreneurial journey, I felt like since I was the uh, smartest person in the room, I should be the most successful. And if I wasn't, um, th there was a problem. Something was going on. The universe was off or whatever have you. But one of the things that I failed to do was, and I do this now heavily, I study my competitors. I study them to a T because if someone is more successful than I am when it comes to my business, obviously they're doing something else that I'm not doing. Once again, that falls on me. That's my overall responsibility as opposed to dwelling on the fact that this person is more successful than me. And then another dose of reality that I had to have was how am I gauging how someone is more successful than me? And I'm a little embarrassed to say this, but I'll be open and honest with you guys. I honestly thought, okay, this person had more likes or more shares or whatever have you. And just based off of what I see from a social proof standpoint, that this person was more successful than me, which was a huge wake up call for me because half of the individuals that are on social media stunting and fronting like they are really doing big things are struggling in their business. Let me say that again. If there's anyone looking at this video and has the entitlement that you know someone is doing better than them based off of what you see on social media, I need you to package that up and throw it away as quickly as possible. Because shares and likes doesn't go with your overall bottom line of making money, right? You can have someone share something 400 or 500 times, but at the end of the day, if they didn't purchase what you have out there, whether it's a product, a service, or whatever the case may be, they're just as broke or just as unsuccessful as you. And it was a wake up call for me. If this person has all this social proof, but they haven't sold anything, if I sell one ten dollar book, OK, I'm in a better position than them. Not saying that I'm better than them from a social standpoint, but it's just at the end of the day, at, at the end of every month, I need to know that I'm making money. I need to know if I'm making money or I'm losing money. And that would be more based off of sales. So after snapping out of that perspective that if someone is, you know, more popular, and I hate using that word, but more popular than, than, than me, that doesn't equate to them being um, more successful in the sense of products, services, or whatever my business is, is enduring. So definitely remove that, that entitlement because that can uh, destroy your business also. Number three, <laughs> blaming others for the lack of your success. 
whoa. Uh, I, it got to a point where I really had to, I, someone really had to not physically slap me, but, um, you know, verbally slap me and just say, you know what, who do you think you are for blaming your failures on, on someone else? Once again, I had to, I was blessed to have this conversation very early in my my business and it and it, it humbled me because at the end of the day if i'm not successful i'm the brainchild of my business right so if i'm not successful that all falls on me i need to endure that overall responsibility and figure out what i need to do to move forward because the old saying is when somebody's pointing the finger at you there's always three other fingers pointing back at you once again if someone is pointing the finger at you and blaming you for being unsuccessful there are three other fingers that's pointing back at them. So if that's you, you need to start looking at yourself. I look at myself. When something doesn't work in my business, I am the first person that I look at. The reason being is because I know that at the end of the day, I make the final decision to move forward with something or to not move forward with something. So I have to look in the mirror every single day and say, OK, going back to the whole failure piece. OK, this did this did not work. So what do I need to do to move forward, right? Even if it's a situation where someone on your team messed up, that ultimately, fall, ultimately falls on you because once again, you didn't either give them clear directions, you didn't check in with them. It all falls back on you being the, the entrepreneur as opposed to you blaming someone else. You know, I had one client who failed a, well, not failed, but they failed to, to, to deliver something on time. Reason being is because they felt that if they didn't choose the quote, they wanted to save money. And the reason why they wanted to save money was, well, the reason why they saved money is because they didn't want to pay the extra, I think it was $50 for overnight shipping as opposed to three to four day shipping. Even though this client told them that I need this stuff as quickly as possible. So instead, and the crazy thing about it was if he would have gotten it to him uh as quickly as possible he would have gotten a bonus and that bonus would have covered well over the cost that he had to pay for the the additional shipping so he blamed the 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 post office he blamed so many other people but then i had to pull him to the side and say you were the one that chose not the overnight shipping but the other shipping so at the end of the day that was your fault once again it was a hard pill to swallow but i tell people Hard pills to swallow are a lot easier to take when you got a lot of water at the end of the day, right? So once again, another entitlement that so many people, so many entrepreneurs have and they fail doing it is blaming other individuals when they are not successful. If you are doing that, you need to get over yourself and figure out the, the ultimate accountability is yours. Because if you praise these individuals when you are successful and you praise yourself when you're successful, so when you take that hit and you fail, you need to look at yourself also. And it's also a learning experience. And at the end of the day, if someone is working for you and something didn't go well, be open, be transparent and say, hey, we, we failed at this. I'm, I take ultimate responsibility for it. That will inspire and motivate your people to do better the next time around as opposed to saying you messed up because you didn't do x y and z well maybe they didn't do x y and z because you didn't tell them to i don't want you to let i want you to really think about that piece and the last entitlement that i wanted to talk about um is looking for an overnight success right as an entrepreneur th th there's at least seven to seven to ten years before you can hit your quote-unquote overnight success it is a grueling role it is very hard it is very it, it, down and dirty but you as an entrepreneur if you believe in yourself your product whatever you're trying to push out to the marketplace eventually you will get there but it may not happen on your own terms and your own timetable me i had to learn the overall power of being patient when it comes to uh you know my, my overall business right i can move at a fast pace but just because i'm moving at a fast pace doesn't necessarily mean my business is going to scale at that same fast pace but that's the decision that i make when it comes to my business and if i move at a fast pace and it doesn't move as 
fast as I want from a success standpoint, I need to look at either one, what more can I do to accelerate that success? Or maybe God is telling me to slow down because at the end of the day, I can have all my ducks in a row. I can have the perfect product, perfect service, and not to get biblical, but at the end of the day, you know, God is giving me this gift and he's giving me this gift of a business, right? So at the end of the day, he controls whether I will be, he controls the overall timetable uh, on how I would quote unquote be successful. But with free will, I make the conscious decision to get up every single day and still push and still keep moving in the right direction. And to be honest with you, some days like today, I'm very tired, I'm very worn out, but I knew for a fact that this video cast, you guys needed this information. And more importantly, this is a part of my business. So I need to push this to move forward. But one of the beauties in this is with me pushing forward, I know for a fact that if I didn't do this, I don't know where I would go with the this overall uh, series because I'm pretty sure you guys have heard this before, but you take you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. And that's very critical to me because there's been a lot of times where I have not been consistent. Inconsistency was a big challenge for me um, when it came to, 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 to my business. But at the same time, me being inconsistent and me still expecting to be successful as quickly as possible, that's going from two different uh, spectrums. It doesn't make any sense, right? If I would hear myself saying that to me in this day and age, if I would hear my younger entrepreneurial self say that now to my older self, I would be like, well, what are you, what are you doing? You obviously aren't being consistent when it comes to your overall business and that inconsistency is hurting your business, right? So I want you guys to be patient. Patient, being patient is very hard. I get it. But at the same time, suck it up and move forward because if, once again, if this is something that you believe in, show up every single day. Success doesn't have a particular timetable and every entrepreneur is going through the same struggles. They're going through the same, they feel like, at the end of the day, they'll never be successful, but it's, 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 it's an overall test to see how bad you want. It. And if you're not willing to endure that test, then maybe being an entrepreneur isn't for you. Maybe you should depend on working for somebody for the rest of your life. But if you are diligent and if you are poised to, to, to move forward and push through all the BS and push through all the criticism, push through all the failures, push through all of the, the negativity and all of the, the roadblocks that you will endure when it comes to being an entrepreneur, you'll be successful. Stop looking at the Zuckerberg. Stop looking at the multi-successful individuals and think, okay, I need to be just as successful as them right now. You're playing yourself. And at the end of the day, the only person that's going to be hurt by this is you and your business. So I don't even want you to go through that, that piece. So Wrapping up the four pieces of entitlement that I see business owners uh, go through a lot. Once again, having the audacity thinking that your family and your friends are obligated to support your business. They're not. Embrace the ones that do, but take on the mentality that you will be more successful based off of the strangers out there than people that you know. There's 8 billion people, 8 billion people in this world and you are bitching and complaining about the small group of people that you know that's not supporting you come on you need to get off your your your, your high horse number two you should be just as successful as your competition just because they're more visible than you once again just because someone is more popular doesn't necessarily mean that they are more successful because once again your bottom line when it comes to a business is how much money you are bringing in and the example that I use, just because someone would get 500 likes off something, if no one purchased anything from them, a $10 book, that I, if, if I sold a $10 book, I, I, I feel that I think that's a, a level of, of success. So don't get caught up in um, that, that quote unquote social proof or that popularity contest because you got a lot of quote unquote popular people out there that are broke. And that'll be a topic that I'll touch on uh, uh, later. The third piece, 
blaming other people for the lack of your success. At the end of the day, it's your responsibility, it's your business. So man up or woman up. And if something doesn't go right, take responsibility for it and figure out how to, to move forward. Because blaming other people for, for, for stuff is so tacky. It is. And I know a lot of people want their business to be sexy and things of that nature. But you are being so unsexy when you're blaming others for a mistake that you were ultimately responsible for. And finally, looking for that overnight success. The only thing happens overnight is another day. So if you are in it for the quick win, maybe you need to not be an entrepreneur. Once again, do not look at these hyper successful individuals and think, okay, I need to be that person right now. You're kidding yourself. And the only thing you're going to do is disappoint yourself and disappoint, you know, your overall business. So. Once again, I hope you guys enjoy that. Uh, I won't even say that little spill, but this is something, the entitlement piece is, is something that I really wanted to, to, to get out. That was something that I really wanted to start with first. But I knew for a fact, based off of my previous biz therapy group sessions, there's always one or two individuals that has a strong sense of entitlement when it comes to their business. We have to bring them back down to, to, to planet Earth. So. Um, before I get off, if you found this information very valuable, share it with your, your, your friends. If you don't, that's fine, but I still have to, to ask. But now I want to take you know the last five minutes to talk about the upcoming Biz Therapy Business Group Breakthrough Session. Um, what I just went through, well, excuse me, our Biz Therapy Group Session, long story short, it's a intimate uh, business intensive, intensive where I take 10 entrepreneurs and we, as a group, work through your current business challenge. And we, whatever that business challenge is, whether it's not bringing in more money, having a high sense of entitlement, not getting the traction that you need, we do a deep dive on that, that business owner. Because one of the key things that I'm proud of when it comes to this therapy, I don't give surface level answers. And the other entrepreneurs in the room don't give surface level answers. We dig deep so you have tangible steps on how you can move forward on your current business uh, problem. Because if you, and, and I also want to think that business problems aren't bad, right? The more you grow, the more you're successful, the more as, uh, the hip hop mogul Dang Dash says, there's more knots you have to untie. If you are enduring business problems, that may not be an overall bad thing. However, I want to give you guys just a the, the, the actual date and time and location of the Biz Therapy group session. So my next session is Saturday, March 23rd from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. So it's a nice block of time where uh, myself and 10 entrep other entrepreneurs, we highlight our current business challenges, and then we also roll up our sleeves and figure out what the best answer will, will be. Um, the actual location will be at a WeWork location in the downtown area. Specifically, it will be 20 West Kinsey Street, uh, Chicago, Illinois, 60654. Once again, my next biz therapy session is Saturday, March 23rd from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at WeWork. Now, there is an investment when it comes to this group session. Um, the overall investment, which includes breakfast, excuse me, breakfast and networking with the other entrepreneurs, an action guide and a journal, a pre-business breakthrough assessment, um, the actual biz therapy session, access to my uh, biz therapy Facebook community where previous biz therapy alumni members they still network and they talk and they highlight their challenges and problems and things of that nature and also we do one of the things that i'm adding this time around um, i'm doing a monthly live q a session where every month we'll get on a conference call so any other challenges that you are enduring from um, when we met at the biz therapy session we can actually talk to and work through it and things of that nature because I want to make sure that you guys are getting value leading up to the event, at the event, and then also after the event. I don't do anything for free. 
right? And I want to make sure that you guys are getting overall value because we all know most people don't value free. They don't. And if I, once again, have offended you because you are a person that does value free, I commend you. But 99.9% .9 of the world, they don't value free. So there's a small investment when it comes to this group uh, session. The investment is $197. However, one of the promotions that I'm running right now, if you are, if you register by midnight tonight, you will be allotted to bring a guest, specifically a business partner or a significant other. But I want someone that you work with with your overall business or that's associated with you so you guys can team up and work out your um, current business challenges. So what I'm going to do is leave the, the URL for you to have more information on the Biz Third group session. If you are interested, feel free to DM me on uh, Instagram or shoot me a message on Facebook. And since it's only 10 once those 10 slots are filled the next biz therapy group session may not be into the summer so what i want you to do is really think about if you are a business owner and you want to invest in yourself when it comes to figuring out your current business problems 197 dollars is nothing compared to the value that you'll gain from the group session and i'm so sure that the group session will provide you with so much value if it doesn't you'll get a 100 percent money back guarantee but i want to make sure that you have tried the things that we suggest during the event i just don't want you to show up and then receive a lot of value and then say that you didn't receive a lot of value i've endured that uh maybe once or twice and really had to kind of lay down the law and that's something that i don't want to do but i will at the end of the day but once again guys because it's a little bit past 9 30 so thank you for your ear your time your effort and energy and if you had any other questions about the biz therapy yeah the biz therapy group session uh feel free to reach out have a good day guys bye Turn this off.